Somebody cup and welcome to another episode for the Wrestling Wednesday here on the Funkle Pod. It's the weekend and you know what that means. It means we look back at what happened in wrestling storyline wise. I'm not going to recap, recap everything that just happened. Obviously, I assume most of you guys watch it anyways. I'm going to talk a little bit about the storylines and once more, I, I'm still not back at WWE to be honest. Like the last few pay per views really, really pushed me away here, especially Survivor Series, which was just terrible. However, I've seen a few spoilers, I've seen a few highlights on YouTube, and the Roman Heyman Brock angle seems to be rather interesting. So maybe next week, or at least then in the new year, I'm gonna be like with the maybe I start with the Royal Rumble again to to get into into WWE for now. Two AW shows per week is kind of nice, actually, especially during the, the Christmas craziness, all meetings and stuff, everything needs to get done. So uh, that's something that I prefer right now. Um, again, not hating on anyone who likes WWE. I, I try to get into it again, maybe with the Royal Rumble. It might might be just a good idea. Okay, but having that said, let's look into um, what happened this week in uh AW and we talked about or we talked we saw on Wednesday Dynamite the special winter is coming episode right with uh, the main event going on first Hangman Adam Page the AW Dynamite World Champion versus Brian Danielson um, the number one contender and of course heel Brian Danielson is just amazing um, it was a 60 minute draw it went back and forth of course everybody had like, both of them had their their moments, obviously, as you would have expected. Um, I still would say that, that, that Brian Danielson, he didn't carry Adam Page, but he carried loads of the match. Doesn't mean that Adam Page wasn't great. It was a great match overall, probably a 78-star match from Dave Meltzer. So it was it was really good. It was really fun. Check it out um, if you haven't done so. Now, it's not about what actually happened, like the... like. Every single move. We're not going to discuss this. It was awesome. And in the end, uh, Adam Page just came with a buckshot lariat one more time and just didn't have enough power to cover in time. And then it was a 60-minute time limit draw. All right. Um, so wh wh where does it leave us? It's a question. Right? What's the story here? So the story obviously is, I mean, A, they try to protect uh, protect both of them, obviously, which you kind of understand. Brian Danielson still rather new. 2AW is still this huge superstar, so you don't just want to burn him out already or just want to have, have him lose, obviously. Um, and then Page also just got the title, so you don't want him to lose the title already. So, huh. The question is now, so I understand, and it's a bit... bit I don't know, it should be discussed because they just did the time limit draw in, in another Brian Danielson match, right? So, okay, against Kenny back then. Okay, cool. Well, it's also the second time. It's like, hmm, okay. We still understand why it's probably better than like some random outside interference, obviously. But where, where do we go from here? They can't just rematch right, right, right away next week, right? Hmm. But it's not resolved. So we will probably see Brian Danielson still being heel and still being like, you didn't defeat me. You ran out. If the, there was a bit more time, I would have defeated you. Um, he is, are there more of the Dark Order that he can feud with? Is he going to take a step back and I know, take someone on who maybe makes fun of him? Like, hey, you, you're the, the time limit draw kind of king, huh? Maybe someone does that and then he feuds with this person for a while first before he gets back at Hangman and then maybe Hangman, um, I don't know, maybe Kenny, Ome Kenny Omega is coming back or any, I don't know, anyone else from the, the click. Maybe Adam Page jumps into the into the main uh, picture eventually. So I think that's something that, where, that we could um, yeah, look into, I believe. While I'm not a big fan of doing another time limit draw, it does kind of work here. It's a bit like New Japan style, right? But it does work because they're both protected, neither lost, and you didn't need to have like some weird outside interference, which would not have made sense because Hangman is a face and Brian Danielson doesn't have any friends. So it makes sense. Um, okay, yeah, let's move on from here. So I still like the match was amazing, of course, and uh, the storyline, I think you can, you can write it. So that's okay. It really depends on what, what happens next and how they not don't have them clash like now every week because even though Brian Danielson should want it, but 
something needs to happen to to get them away a little bit and then they clash again and be like yeah what's happening now so i think this this would be the way to go there um we then had a more or less squash match of wardlow against matt seidel the Seidels are doing quite well in like in tag teams, but he just got squashed by Wardlow, which was a bit of a weird thing that they that they chose Matt Seidel, that Seidel for being squashed. Um, yeah, the jam and Sean Spears with a chair, of course, and in the end, just also after Wardlow won already, he just hit the the, the chair on um, on Matt Seidel. Yeah, that was a squash again. Surprised that they squashed Seidel. That they could have used anyone else uh, there to squash. I wasn't a big fan of this. This will eventually, of course, lead to Wardlow turning on MJF again somewhere down the road. He or probably first turning on um, Tom, on Spears because Spears keeps yelling at him, shouting, and then basking in the glory. So it's going to be like Wardlow versus Spears eventually, and then maybe Wardlow against MJF somewhere down the line. You can see Wardlow uh, d- defecting from from the pinnacle, and then just eventually. We haven't heard it that word in a long, in a long time, right? And then eventually, like chasing down MJF, maybe. So. Um, yeah, I think that's where we're going here. The match was fine for a squash, but why squash Matt Seidel? So not a big fan of this. Um, yeah, also after the match, then Sean, Sean Spears gets a call from MJF in the ring, and he then tells Wardlow the orders from MJF. So we can see that Wardlow is not going to be happy with this uh, for a long time. Then we had Ty Conti. Ty Con- <clears throat> I can't stop. One stop. Um, and Penelope for they are hyping the upcoming match. Let's see if that match really, um, really lived up to it. Um, we didn't also had Malachi Black, who I'm really, yes, so he's a great performer, but like this persona and everything is just, I hate it. <laughs> I just hate it. Um, then we have Serena D versus Hikaru Shida. Holy Shida. Um, yeah, this was Serena D really. I don't know. I wasn't a huge fan before, to be honest. I mean, she was always good, but it wasn't like, oh my God, it's Serena D. But she's doing some good work here, I believe. Um, I like the, the heel persona of Serena Deep. And of course, I also like that Hikaru Shida now eventually wins here, which is which is nice. Uh, so they, they're trading a bit back and forth there, but Hikaru Shida needed to get, get, get one back, I think, get another win here. And yeah, that just serves... That feud, of course, and also serves that then Sheeta can move on and trying to chase maybe a little bit more glory while Serena Deep can be the mean heel like, still and like, ah, oh, that was lucky and, and so on. Um, so, yeah, we can we can work with this. The match itself wasn't bad. Um, the other thing I'm missing in the women's division is still a little bit like the stories between the participants there. It's like, ah, I'm, I, I hate you, but yeah, but why? Like, there needs to be some more animosity or some more explanation at, at some point. Uh, at some point. Mm-hmm. Also, we remember last week that Michael Black had attacked Julia Hart and now the Varsity Blondes interviewed and then um, yeah, Brian Pillman Jr. and Griff Garrison. And yeah, so Griff Garrison says he's going to break his jaw, like uh, Michael Black's jaw. The Pillman Jr. tries to calm him down, but he says, then, uh, then uh, Garrison says, if you don't have her back, I have. I'm going to fight America Black next week. Of course, he's going to die. Uh, I don't see the story here yet either. Maybe there's something with Julia Harden down the line and she's going to join the House of Black or something. Um, but as of now, I don't I don't see it. But I guess something they have some, they must have something in, in the back burner because otherwise they would just be terrible we see eddie kingston then hyping the 10-man tag for rampage okay cool and and we have mjf of course trying to criticize cm punk's comments nice back and forth he then compares cm punk's winning streak to ryback's winning streak ryback to aw confirmed now <laughs> yeah that was that was a fun line i think i don't mind it by the way i don't mind that they are um that they're having those references and not that they're like shitting on wwe necessarily right it's more like they expecting you as the viewers, the audience, to know what they're referring to. So it's like like one big wrestling universe, not just WWE and the rest doesn't exist or the other way around. They're like acknowledging that different things exist and that they expect you to understand. And I think that's cool. So from a storytelling point of view, that's cool. Like different story angles and moving them into it, even so you didn't plan it or you didn't create it back then, 
I think that's cool. So uh, from a storytelling point of view, I, I, I have no issue with this. Okay, and then we had a diamond, dynamite, dynamite, diamond ring final. MJF versus Dante Martin. Of course, MJF wins of, uh, against Dante Martin with a salt of the earth in, in, in the very end. And Dante Martin actually tapped out rather quick, which is cool because, of course, he's an up-and-comer and he's awesome and so on. But it's still MJF, the number one heel, I would say, right now. And his finisher should be, like, protected, of course. Then, um, of course, we have um, them beating down Dante Martin. But then FTR, like FTR is there to, to then interfere when um, Sting and Darby Allen try to help out. So then they are brawling, which is, yeah, like why are they always there? <laughs> I mean, they have the history, obviously. Um, like and also with like MJF the pinnacle attacking Darby Allen and so on, so they're, they're like enemies for life, I guess, and I guess that that's why they always run into each other. So that that, that does actually make sense and uh, no problem. And then uh, CM Punk came out to save the day with a baseball bat in hand, and then everybody fled. So uh, congratulations. Yeah, why CM Punk has to, had to interfere there? Not sure. Someone had to, so I guess. It's always good to send CM Punk out, out and make the fans happy. <laughs> Other than that, I mean, yeah, like I said, they're mortal enemies, Darby Allen and Sting and FTR and the Pinnacle. So makes sense, kind of. So not, not mad at that. Probably see more of this uh, as we move forward. Then we moved into uh, Friday into Rampage. And at Rampage, um, it started with Adam Cole, baby, Bobby Fish, and the Young Bucks versus Orange Cassidy, Rocky Romero, and the Best Friends. And yeah, it was cool. I mean, that, that's, that's a. So if you're into it, you're into it. If you're not into it, you hate it, right? So lots of spots, of course, lots of Orange Cassidy hands and pockets, like in flips and stuff. And who. I like it, so I, I don't take wrestling too serious, as you might have already guessed. So I'm I'm totally um, up with it, up for it. Mm. I don't need to see it like every single week, I think. Um, but overall, like this quick back and forth, because they're all fantastic athletes in there, right? So it was just like had like lots of triple super kicks and 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 bte triggers and whatnot so it was all cool and then um in the end we have the the faces with orange cassidy rock romero and the best friends picking it up uh, picking up the win all good um i don't know where you go from here because you can't make those eight man tag team thing a thing all the time like let's fight again next week Eh." so they now have to move on to like either like tag team fights or then uh, individual fights of course down the road um but for like a one-off like, hey, your friends suck. Your friends suck too. Let's, okay, meet in the ring. That makes sense uh, to me after last week's interference of oh, like sa- Trent Barretta saving everybody else. So, um, yeah, that made sense. That's the culmination right now. And then let's move on. So all good here. We then had the man of the year. Uh, they're beating down Cody and Dustin Rhodes because, well, yeah. Dan Lambert complained, and in this case, he's right. He's like, why does Cody get another title shot at Sammy Guevara? Why did Barbara get just Cody kissing up to, and so on, to Tony Khan? And then you you, you thought that they would turn Cody, right? But now he they, he's, he's like pitted against Dan Lambert and the American top team. So you're like, huh. So they, pu- they don't pull the trigger just yet. They're going to pull the trigger when he actually faces Sammy Guevara. Um... Yeah, maybe. I thought, oh, they, they they keep him as a baby face when I saw that that, that he like stood up to uh, to the man of the year, and then of course they beat him down, and then dust they beat down dust in two. But then Sammy Guevara comes out. Sammy Guevara comes out and makes the save, uh, so that they can have a match next week, and maybe next week, however, in the match against Sammy, maybe then Cody loses it, and then he turns full heel because he has to go full heel eventually because no one likes him. So I hope this, and then maybe. Cody goes heel, Sammy wins, and then the man of the year uh, chased down Sammy or something. So uh, this could be something that, that I can see happening. Um, we then had the TBS Women's Title Tournament semi-finalist win yet uh, to, to watch. And then after this, we had the, submiss- the submission match between Penelope Ford and Ty Conti. And who won? Um, it was good. It was really. It was. It was a fun match. Again, I say it a lot, but it's back and forth, which is nice in this case because you don't have one. Don't have another squash, squash match there. 
Um, after the match wrapped up, we had the bunny there, of course, and who, who attacks Ty County. Mm-hmm. Once Penelope before the recovery, she joined her, of course, and then they had their brass knuckles, obviously. Um, yeah, so where do we go from, from here? Ty Conti won first, so she can bask a little bit in the glory, but she got beaten down, so this feud has to continue. Next up, then, probably the bunny versus uh, Ty Conti again. That's what I meant earlier. So they're all good performers, but we need to see like more character development they're like why do you hate each other so much what's what's in there why should i be invested because right now it's just match every a match every week i'm like yeah okay cool but i'm not invested enough i need to have more story behind the characters i think like Britt baker for example has a story with certain opponents and then it makes sense so and you also see an announcement for the own hard cup to, that will kick off in may and then the finals of the own hard cup will be double or nothing in 2022 which is cool and just speaks volumes that this is going to happen in AEW and not in WWE, right? Good job, WWE. Uh, then to bring us home, we have the acclaimed, which still looks like a stupid sign for the people listening. I tried to do the acclaimed sign. Uh, we had 2.0, looks stupid written out, by the way. Um, and we had, of course, Daniel Garcia, because he's basically a member of 2.0 by now. And we had uh, them facing over Santana and Ortiz. We had the Lucha Bros and honorary Spanish Mexican Eddie Kingston. And again, there was lots of fun. It was a bit, bit more brawly as uh, compared to the first multi man tag, of course, but it was also fun. And the Lucha Bros, I'm just a huge, I'm, I'm sorry, I can't be. Um, can be uh, impartially, but I'm a luch, oh, luch, yeah, I'm a huge, you can see that, a huge fan of the Lucha Bros. Uh, cero miedo. And <laughs> I loved, I loved them ever since, uh, since Lucha Underground. So it was fun. It was more, more, a bit more brutal, but it was still fun. In the end, it was a roll up victory on Eddie Kingston by Daniel Garcia. And then they tried to beat him down. And then out comes Jungle Express, uh, to make the safe. And then we had a stare on between the Lucha Bros and Jungle Express. Because even though they're both baby faces, more or less, one has to beat the other because you, know, you want to be champion. So we had a stare on between Lucha Bros and Jungle Express. So this is probably something to look forward to what's going to happen next. We will also definitely see Eddie Kingston not giving up on this. He they, He's going to go for uh, 2.0 and uh, Daniel Garcia. He's going to chase him down and just beat the shit out of Daniel Garcia rather soon, I believe. Um, yeah. With the acclaim, they're a little bit le- left out in limbo right now, but as long as they can tag along with those things, I think I think they're still doing well and they keep probably winning and then they will be in and for a title shot ra- sooner than later um, because now we have Jurassic Express faces, Lucha Bros faces. They're going to need another heel team up there next to FTR and I think the claimed are uh, uh, slowly getting there so uh i think overall it was fun again this week again the storylines made sense most of the time if it didn't uh, i i mentioned it like once or twice uh but you can handle it because it's not the majority of the matches however i do do still stand stand um to my point saying that i would love to see more story character development especially in the women's division that would be nice and now we had so many multi-man tag matches now especially like on rampage 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 very german Mm -hmm. uh, on rampage so we really need to see like what's happening next because you can't do this forever it's fun once in a while but like two on the same card is already a little bit tough so um yeah i want to see now more development again as we move forward and coming closer to the end of the year all right that's it for me with my quick take on aw dynamite and rampage this week let me know what you think um please do like share subscribe to this podcast um it's at funkitpod on social media if you want to shout out my email is funkitpod at gmail.com uh, ask questions whatever would be cool i'm gonna make sure to also discuss them hopefully in in the future if there are more coming in uh please rate this thing this podcast wherever you listen to stitcher itunes apple podcast google podcast spotify whatever um rate and interact i i try to have some some interactive questions on on, on those podcast pages so yeah, feel free to vote and leave your response and so that it really helps so that more people can find it if more people find it we can have bigger discussions and that's cool so uh again do this thanks for being here joining i hope you're heading into like a nice christmas we will be back however of course one more time or two more times even um in a week from now until then as always stay safe take care don't forget to pick out a two and i'll see you soon
Sau, Ciao,